But that's not the end because there was other movies that came out this month, Jeff. Okay. Hey, fine. Tell so, me about it. <laughs> what, what is that a threat? Do enlighten us. I'm just letting you know. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, Sydney Lumet, who uh, is a great New York director, passed away a few years ago. Did another courtroom drama. He's famous for uh, Go Angry Men, The Verdict, uh, Find Me Guilty. He did a um Yeah, that's what he's famous for. But find me guilty, yeah. Okay. He gave he gave him, yeah. Vin Diesel's it's the great. Best Vin Diesel film. Yeah. It is. It is, yeah, but no one knows about it. Okay, well that's a hidden gem. Yeah. We're talking about hidden gems. Yeah. Um speaking of hidden gems, Guilty of Sin came out, which um was around the heyday of uh Don Johnson post uh Miami. Miami Vice, and right before uh, Nash Bridges, hmm. so, um, he plays like this sleazy, this sleazy um, succubus. Well, incubus, I guess it wouldn't be. Yeah, incubus is a incubus is the male version, who um, who marries for money, and he he fully admits to killing his wife, and uh, he's put on trial with um, Rebecca De Mornay as his. Um, attorney and he starts playing psychological mind games with her it's very uh it's it's a tart acidic um erotic journey i enjoyed it actually it's a really good movie because the erotic part this i i'm kind of mad that we didn't pick this instead but jeff yeah but jeff would have hated it yeah i don't is it an erotic thriller actually you know what she's not stupid enough to go to bed with him so okay even though she, he, he like intimates at that several times, so she's oh, actually they give thriller. her enough yeah. agency where she's smart. What's that? That was, good. that was a good one. Yeah, what are you I said, ah, oh, it's a neurotic thriller. No. Neurotic. Yeah, uh, I kid, I kid. That sounds good though. I mean, I didn't know of this until now either, so it could have been our. Yeah, I just saw it this past month for the podcast. But I think this worked out fine. Especially because of the date it came out, you know. Yeah, I know Jimmy's kidding. And speaking of kids, Life of Mikey came out. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice little. Uh, that was a good segue, right? Step. Sure. That was a good yeah, segue. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is one of the uh, the uh, bevy of Michael J. Fox vehicles that kind of drowned in the nineties. Mm-hmm. Um, he did a, a lot of movies in the nineties, just uh, kind of forgotten. Yeah, and Doc Hollywood's on. One end of the spectrum, very underrated. This mm-hmm. one's on the other end of the spectrum. Kind of forget Overrated? Eh, kind of in a way. Yeah. Because uh, I don't even think he has good chemistry with the girl, to be honest with you. So mm-hmm. he plays like a um, a former child star who becomes a talent agent for uh, child actors. And he finds this like, this kind of, um, this orphan ragamuffin that he, uh, he tries to uh, take under his counsel. You know, you know who's actually really good in the movie is Nathan Lane plays his brother. Hmm. And he's got the best stuff in the movie. But other than that, it's kind of one of those mediocre um, Disney live action movies that were coming out around that time, like Man in the House. Was Christina Vidal? Yeah, she done. Well, she's uh, she done. I was trying to think of what she was in. She's a uh, one of Lindsay Lohan's friends in Freaky Friday. Wow, she's in The Guilty. She was one of the voices. Oh uh-huh. no, she's she's his boss. She's one of the actual physical people that interact. Oh with wow, him. yeah. And then yeah. she's well, a singer. Well, obviously, I recognize her. She became a singer more than anything else. She did the song for the Men in Black Two soundtrack. Uh, Black suits coming. Nod your head. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as much I as a brothers. troublemaker as she is, she's hmm. nothing to Dennis the Menace, which also came out this month. Ah. I'm the king of the segways right now. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So does, <laughs> does anybody uh, remember Dennis the Menace, the film? Oh, Fun yeah. fact. I, I used to watch the hell out of that movie. My grandmother tried to get me to audition for it. Yeah? What? What? They were, you know, back in, or really, it never changed. They always would have those casting calls for, uh, like, national casting calls for kids. For kids' movies, because you always want to find a new talent or whatever. You so could have been believe, with Walter Matthau. I believe either Menlo Mall or Woodbridge Mall uh, was having like an open <clears throat> casting call for Dennis the Menace. Wow. Kids in that, and 
And uh, I know that the, hmm. the kid that actually plays Dennis the Menace went to school with our friend Sean. Mason Ram- Gamble. Yeah, Mason Gamble went to Rampo University. He's huh. the same age as you, Jimmy. What? So he's wow. a year younger than me. That's so nuts. So Sean knew him. But <clears throat> interesting. College. Apparently, he's happy with what he's doing. I think he did like business or something at Rampo. Last thing I knew he was in was Rushmore. Mm hmm. Yeah, he's just kind of done with acting, but he's I don't know what he's movie. doing since then. So, like the last decade, but honestly, as a uh, as a four quadrant kids movie, it's not bad. And uh, yeah. just further example that um, uh, Christopher Lloyd is so good at playing villains. Oh, actually, yeah. he's he's such a chameleon; he's good at playing any. Yeah, yeah. That, that was my first introduction of him playing a villain. Mm-hmm. You saw that before Roger Rabbit. Uh, I didn't recognize him in Roger Rabbit, so it didn't register. That's actually one of the films I watched with my grandmother all the time. The one that tried to get me into Dennis the Menace. Because I think the first thing that I saw him in that, like, I I reckon it was Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. So by the time I saw Dennis the Menace, like, it's just like, uh, I was like, oh, he's a bad guy. Yeah. Walter Matthau's great in the movie. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's perfect casting as that. He's great. Like he, casting. he just looks like uh, the neighbor. Martha Plowright plays his wife. Is that okay? Yeah. I didn't know that. He's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah my the mom, casting my in this is well done. No. Yeah, could have been you though. Could have been, been me. This could have been the Dennis the Menace podcast. Yeah, yeah. This is your version of Bunny. Oh, uh-huh. then we, if, like we, if, I, if we did if this if we did a Dennis the Menace, Grandma Lillian <laughs> saw my talent. Yeah, my mom said no. Oh, uh, what? She didn't want to become a child actor, mom. Did that oh. keep you up at night? No. Oh, so you weren't sleepless in Seattle, which also came out this month. Ah, you look at me. I'm on fire. <laughs> um, so it's basically like a soft remake of a fair to remember mm-hmm. where um they meet at the top of the uh, Empire State Building. It's a it's the second collaboration between Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. Um, yes. Of the of the three, my least favorite. Really? Yeah. Wow. Honestly, I like that's Jeff a hot Jeff take. Volcano the best. That's the one I haven't seen, but I I have a feeling I'll love it. So I kind of want to have. Will. I want to end my Tom Hanks filmography because I'm actually kind of close. I got to see a lot of his early films, but that's the one I want to end on because I've heard how good it is from you. Yeah, and I think uh, well, more so for that movie, it's more of a Tom Hanks vehicle. In these other two movies, they get about equal billing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you've got Mail as a surprise. I like you. I didn't. Me. I didn't mind it. I still again, think this I is haven't better. seen Shop Around the Corner, so I don't think it's yeah. as good. Yeah, but um, it's have weird you guys that... seen it? Sleepless in Seattle? Hmm? No, maybe which. The kid is not I, I hate the kid in the movie. That might be why I don't oh. like the movie. Yeah, that makes sense. You hate kids, so. I do. Mm. Jeff, have you seen Sleepless in Seattle? I have not. Oh, boy. It's weird because this Guys, was like. I'm going to have you over it. But in the 90s, it seemed like Bill Pullman was getting typecast as the uh, the meddlesome. Um, cuck. The, yeah, the cuck. Yeah, yeah the, <laughs> the other love interest. Yeah. yeah. He's really funny in this. David Hyde Pierce is in it. Um, Rosie oh, O'Donnell. Forgot. Rosie O'Donnell is actually pretty good. Yeah, she's pretty good in it. Um, I love this film, but it's also really? one of my one of my parents' favorite films. So they would watch it anytime it was on TV. I've seen it dozens of times. It's on a lot. Yeah, my parents could quote it without even trying. So this is like the cutting mm. edge from last year. Those two were on rotation in my house as a kid. Yeah. So I kind of know it by heart. Um, in recent years, I've seen why maybe people wouldn't like it. Like you think it's the least of their three collaborations. You've got males almost understand. like the same premise in a way. Only yeah, for interaction, and that's so, really why people didn't like it because it seemed like a rehash of Sleepless in Seattle. Yeah. But if you th- really think about it, they literally don't meet until the end. Technically, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of a spoiler for YouTube, but that's the premise of the film. They're not and you kind of figure that's where it's going, though. It's right. Not... So it, mm-hmm. if you think about it, it's really about Tom Hanks and his son and Meg Ryan and her um, commitment phobia. Right. And I think I like that 
more than ever their chemistry <laughs> so yeah that actually that part of the plot line is more intriguing than the whole arc of those two getting together yeah i think i actually like meg ryan more than anything in this film huh so she no she's good in the, they have good chemistry obviously yeah but her her uh character always questioning what's love got to do with it which mm -hmm. is the movie that came out and hey, hey, hey. hey. oh so we killed Tina Turner. We do this every month. We kill someone. Yeah. I yes. mean, for the music of chance with two billionaires. So this is a biopic about Tina Turner. And um, I think uh, she got nominated and uh, Lawrence Fishburne got nominated as Ike. They Turner, did. Her uh, infamously abusive uh, ex-husband. Yeah. Um, and boy, do they not sugarcoat that. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> He was definitely not a producer on this one. <laughs> uh, Lawrence Fishburne's really good. It's, it's wrenching to watch most of the time. But mm -hmm. in, by the end, I don't feel like I got really any insight into Tina Turner as a person. I knew about mm -hmm. her as a performer, but not as a person, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. There's a documentary that came out a couple of years ago. I wonder that might that be better. Sure. That might be better, yeah. Though I, I hear this is really the film that uh, Angela Bassett was robbed for. So if she had won for Black Panther. It was almost like a consolation. Like, right. Sorry Ooh. about that. Yeah. Mm. So, although throughout all the decades, she's so sinewy. She's like so muscular. She's, she's so good in everything, honestly. Yeah. Even back in the Jurassic Age, she was good. Mm hmm. Like the movie you started with, Jurassic Park. Hey. Hey. Ooh, full circle. Yep. I thought you were going to go to that from the last one because I said uh, her and chem her chemistry with Tom Hanks. Speaking oh, of yeah. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, it's a landmark film. Mm -hmm. um, it's also well, two of our is... favorite films. Yeah. It's Jimmy's favorite film. I, I just, yeah, it I, is. It's not even in my top 10 Spielberg. But um, I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. But I don't love it. Well, we'll talk more about this for Lost World. Yeah. Um. It's not even my. It's not Four my years. first movie in the franchise. Yeah, wait. The first one isn't your favorite of the franchise. You like three better than one. I do. <laughs> I feel like the first one has this lofty idea that it's about more than just dinosaurs chasing people. And it's yes, not. I mean, yeah. That's why it's elevated it's from not, even the book. By the end, it's not. It abandons all that just so that kids can be in peril. It's about which is good. It's I mean, about. You know, a man reconciling with his desire to have a family. Because yeah, his work takes him from having a normal life. That's but, he subs, but he substitutes the family with dinosaurs for the most oh, yeah. over your head. Yeah. Yeah. It's like can I buckle a seatbelt? You know how like Jeff or my opinion, like, ontologist. was talking about how he likes ambiguity? Yeah. Where from the very beginning <laughs> do they just show you how much Sam Neil fucking hates kids? <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love that actually. <laughs> I mean, it is a funny scene, but it's like it, it, there's no subtlety to this at all. Mm -hmm. But I have some of the casting that could have been in this for some of these actors. Jim Cameron, sure when he was going to make about this, when when was uh, possibly going to make it, there was a bidding war really on top of each other, and Spielberg actually had to use some subterfuge to make sure it went to Universal. But James Cameron tried to get it at the same time, and he would have had Arnold Schwarzenegger playing Grant. Right. Uh huh. Oh, I want to see him punching dinosaurs now. Right? <laughs> Damn it! So this so could have been he, he would have later. said, "Quick, get in the chopper!" At the end. So you yeah. know what's interesting is that because you know Spielberg has a light touch, based on the novel, from what you I've gathered from what you told me about the novel, he's mm -hmm. definitely changed and recontextualized some of the characters and softened a lot of them, like Hammond, for instance. Yeah, I mean, it comes off in the novel that he's kind of like a, a little bit of a dictator uh, that wants to control everything, and he's just mean to people. He doesn't want his grandkids there. And so originally there were, I think even he was the one that wanted Clint Eastwood. I don't know if that was also Jim Cameron or Spielberg, but I think it was Spielberg. You can't cast uh, an girl not make so, it oncular. Yeah, he would have been real grumpy, you know? And so he could have done that. There was a version, maybe this is the camera one. Charlton Heston was slated to possibly play him. 
And so that would have been like the really gruff, really mean, hmm. like, I don't give a shit about people. I just want money kind of guy. He could have done that. Yeah. Um, but then Spielberg took the now retired director, Richard Attenborough, and plugged him in as like basically Santa Claus, which he plays the next year. Yes. So I think it works in hindsight very well, but I'm sure as they were making it, they're like, he's supposed to die. He's supposed to get his comeuppance. And now you've made him like Walt Disney. I think, yeah, you know, it's it's almost a case where the casting almost made that impossible. Like the audiences would have revolted if they had killed him off. Mm -hmm. Because he's so, as you say, warm and sanguine. Yeah. It was like when they put um, John Glover in Gremlins 2 and you're like, I think he's supposed to be the villain, but I like him too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that sort of thing can't happen. I mean, the linchpin of this film isn't in the novel either. It's when he's eating all the ice cream because it's going to melt. And that's just kind of the thing he's thinking about because he doesn't want to think about the death around him. And Ellie Sattler is like, you got to think about the death around you. This is what you've done to yourself. So that, I think, is the kind of thing that he elevates above the novel. There's never a conversation like that. That's his real comeuppance. You have to live with the, the blood on your hands. So... It's so just not good that they're that they, really comparable, yeah. but do you prefer the novel or the film? <clears throat> well, I saw yeah, the film I guess first. I know the answer. I saw the film first, so technically I, I think I'd say the film, but the novel just... This is what I always think. Whatever you do first is going to be the thing you like more, but I, I think I like watching the movie first because then the novel can expand upon it. I read The Hunger Games after seeing the movies. I read two of the Lord of the Rings novels after seeing the movies. And I liked them better because they could give you more detail about characters that didn't get a lot of screen time, you know, like the side characters. So you get more characterization for Malcolm. You get some characters that aren't even in it. And then you're like, oh, well, that's both Gennaro and Ed Regis are just Gennaro's stuff. Like Ed Regis dies in the same way that Gennaro does. And Gennaro moves on and does some stuff that Muldoon does. And so you can see what's changed, but you're like, oh, that's kind of fun. And you're in a reverse way learning how they adapted it. And if it's adapted well, then you can appreciate both. So I think the Hunger Games did that as well, which is why I brought that up. Yeah. Um, you know, it. I read Silver Linings Playbook, and I think they changed that enough that it feels like two different things. So you can appreciate both. But I know a lot of people that will have read the novel, and they're like, well, they didn't do it the way I saw it. Sure. <laughs> so I think I love both. And I've read the novel um, five times. And I've liked it every time as much as I've seen Jurassic Park also dozens of times. So I, I just like the story in general. Funnily enough, uh, just personally, uh, when I went to go see it in the theater, I remember uh, the first scene, you don't even see the T-Rex because he's doing it. He kind of does the Jaws rule mm-hmm. again where mm-hmm. you don't really see it and it's full glory and so by it. You probably know the time, Mark. Um, Actually, I don't. I was going to say, I have a new time stamp. But uh, you just hear it roaring. And I remember, apparently, and I remember this, my mom recalls it all the time. I was so scared. I ran and hid and ducked in the aisle. Wait, what, what part did you freak out on? Just the, just them lowering the T-Rex into the... Uh, the Velociraptor. A, a, oh, sorry. sorry the Velociraptor. Yeah, you hear the T-Rex oh, you see, when the branches are waving, but then the... You see, the part, the part, the, when I was a kid, I saw it in theaters, the part I freaked out on was uh, when the Velociraptor popped out behind Ellie. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. That's where I lost it. <laughs> I used to be scared that they had re-released Snow White in theaters like they were doing with a bunch of Disney films. And I was, oh, I would run from the room whenever the Wicked Witch would like tackle from her balcony as she turns into the Wicked Witch. And my parents were like, we're not taking you to Jurassic Park. You're freaked out by like the witch from Snow White. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, but dinosaurs aren't real. I can understand that. And they're like, okay, he's smart enough at this point. He's, he's good. <laughs> That's so, funny. Yeah. What about you, Jeff? What's your, what's your memory of Jurassic Park? I'm trying to think because I don't think I saw it until a couple of years later. He's the youngest of us. He just turned five. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's true. Honestly, I don't think I saw Jurassic Park until I was in high school. Wow. The first time. What? How that's are we friends? friends? <laughs> I think it might have been with you. This is why we do Poster Boy. Right. I feel like, no, I honestly, I, I feel like it might have been like, you know, we might have just been at Tristan's one day and this whole conversation came up again. You're like, wait, 
I'm getting it right now. I feel it's like, like I dude, I've seen Carnosaur. Well, I don't need to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Um, no, I just I remember really liking the music and Jackson, you know not quite grasping the 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 full hilt of the hubris involved mm. um i also and this is this is, i'm going to get some flack for this i have trouble getting through a lot of spielberg movies just because they're so long <laughs> it's hmm. not it's not no, a i don't bad, think that's a hot take but i need yeah, to it's like, not a hot take i need to do i need to do you know, it's not good with endings. I'll tell you that. I need to do like what Tristan does, where it's just like you gotta you gotta break it up into sections. Chapters. Yeah, I don't like doing that. No, I, I know. It's for this the... movie because it's based on a book. Right. I never read. Well, that was the other thing. I never read the book. Serialize it too, so I don't have like direct comparisons between that. But I, is... I remember liking it. I remember loving when when I, I was I was obsessed with the little Barbasol can that Newman had. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe you said oh, Newman. There it is. He has it. There you mean go. Nedry. Yeah. It's Nedry. Nedry. So first it's his first this is definitely anyway. just shaving cream. That it's just a crap. Have, that scene might have freaked me out too. Traumatized me too. What the Dilophosaurus? Yeah, when he dies. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly that one. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because I think without this, if this movie didn't have the cultural impact it did, I know the research would have came out eventually. But now that we know all this stuff about how dinosaurs actually sound, that they were covered in feathers and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I don't know, if, I don't know if it would have been as significant or as relevant. No. Yeah, I think... You couldn't make Jurassic Park today. Been... Yeah, I mean, well, it, it has shaped what we are today, I think. Right. Along with stuff like Jaws or I Star mean, Wars. At the time, they were... They made Jurassic Park with, like, the latest information they could use. Just, exactly. like, the big thing that they changed was, like, what a velociraptor was and what a then the size of a dilophosaurus and its frills and stuff like this is yeah really and its frills like, that's about all uh, it looks like yeah i i haven't seen any of the new yeah. ones so i don't know if they've sort of included that research in like there are they've tried to dinosaurs with oh with the, with the, newer oh, jurassic, the jurassic world movies especially yeah. the third one they they uh they they displayed a fully feathered velociraptor looking raptor mm -hmm. but like it was big like a real velociraptor would be the size of a chicken and its snout doesn't make a like an alligator yeah it doesn't it, its snout looks like curved up in a weird way yeah more like this yeah like the way that they have see, yeah you can see that its nose is blunter that's more like what an actual snout of a raptor would be i think right uh, no go because the way that it's on your uh, that we see it where it crests downwards yeah, like an upside down d flip it the other way that's the, the way that a velociraptor should look hmm. i don't know how to do that um <laughs> yeah they also took away some of the things that they had made mistakes of in the original film for some of these jurassic world movies so it is i think better science even though then they get more outlandish so this is yeah. the most down to earth Jurassic Park for sure. Um, the pilot episode. Yeah. Um, there's something okay. about it. I think it's just the timing. Like, I was watching the documentary Jurassic Punk that just came out last year that talks about the uh, VFX artists that helped cre make this such a dynamic film. And uh, the two guys that were the head of the VFX department, uh, they. We're coming off of Terminator 2, and they had revolutionized how to use CGI for T-1000. So before that, they were like, can we do this with a maquette, like the police officer going through the bars of a jail? And they, instead of using green screen around him, they put a grid on him. It was like the first time that had happened. And so utilizing that sort of technology, they could make the movements of the T-Rex with its hips. They figured that out, but then they could apply it on the actual uh, robots that they had made. So they knew how to do movements, say like with the Gallimimus stampede and utilizing both the old and the new at the time they made this film. I think that's why it was the perfect timing. It's I, if it had even been three years later, something else might've come along and revolutionized that CGI technology. So I think this is just 
a perfect storm of everything coming together, the right actors, the right director to handle it, the um, technology being perfect, perfect for what you want, you know, and obviously it's advanced even further, but sometimes you utilize that too much, you know, right. it's an over-reliance. And then, you know, it, it seems well, like they definitely took their time with the effects on this one. So that well, they also, rather than the smart thing is they took Stan Winston had that puppet. Yeah. So it's easy to use that as a uh, a basis for the CGI. So you intermingle the two instead of yeah. just relying entirely on CG. Right. They said they had three teams that were going to work on stuff. And those two guys were like, what if we just use CGI? And so there is more CGI in it. But if you have that baseline of the puppet, they can extrapolate on that. Right. You know. Um. Yeah, I don't know. What what else do you want to say about it, Jimmy? This is your favorite movie, so this is the time oh, yeah, to no, talk about uh, it. I mean... There, there's time so to shine, there's, Jimmy. There, like, I don't know. I feel like there's so much already that like everybody knows there's so much already on the internet about Jurassic Park. I don't... I, don't well, think I want to know I'm your sure journey you. with it. Like, oh, my, how you I saw mean, it. What was your favorite movie before this? Do you okay, know? Well, in terms of dinosaurs, yeah. it was Land Before Time. That's what got me into it. So... uh yeah. because of the land little before foot. time that i wanted to see jurassic park and i saw it and like a little my warped little mind couldn't handle it but then like a year later when it was on vhs i was like okay i could handle this now said mm -hmm. jurassic park yeah oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah because like th there was definitely some bits uh like like i said with the velociraptor like popping through the uh uh behind uh ellie and just almost ripping to her, her to shreds and then like you see uh, Samuel Jackson's arm fall on her shoulder, and you're like, "Oh, a severed arm!" That's the first bit of horror I saw as a kid. Mm -hmm. Did they they film that, or that was a scheduling conflict? A little bit of both. Okay, that's why Sam, Sam Jackson said he was supposed to come back to the island, but because of all the storms that would come through, his schedule like wouldn't allow him to return. Yeah. So they were going to have a thing in the novel. He's like in the field and gets attacked. Can I tell you something? That is one of the reasons why I don't. I don't love the movie because I'm like that's such a slasher cliche. Yeah, it's Why would a his fucking arm be positioned It's a slasher like that? movie with yeah. dinosaurs. I mean, that, that's, that's a charm. It's just, it thinks it's more. It's than just that. Spielberg leaning back charm on his film. old Jaws days. Come if on, it it's just, all Jurassic Park is. It's just land Jaws. If it was yeah. like dual with uh, dinosaurs, I'd be cool with it. But the movie, and the first half sets it up to be a little more thought provoking than it actually thinks it is. I don't know. It's fine. It's a popcorn wow. flick. With, I, yeah, it's, I just want to see a popcorn dinosaurs flick with some heavy thought behind it. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little too much thought, but you know, it's, I mean, it's, also, no, car, it's no carnosaur. It's also the yeah, first. No. Uh, it's also the first film I had a screen crush on somebody. Ellie. Laura Dern. Laura Dern. Yeah, Laura Dern. Yeah, she's my first screen crush for sure. At age six. How do you think she looked in the number? Uh just fine. There you go. Like a wine. Yeah. Perfect. Everyone complains about her being a last Jedi, and I'm like, you got to see uh, Carrie Fisher and Laura Dirt interact on screen. I don't know what you want yeah. more than this. Yeah. So she's people, great. Actress. People are just negative naysayers. So, um, yeah, I uh, I love the film. I wanted to be Ian Malcolm when I was a kid. Well, so, well, well this movie was definitely. The undisputed champion of the box office, mm -hmm. but yeah, I still whenever I look at the box office, when they say something like Super Mario movie has risen to like yeah, but the inflation it, it's not even close. I look at where Jurassic Park is in relation to it, and I think, okay, well, it still would have been number one right now if it came out today. That sort of thing. I mean, going so to still, is going to be the number one. I my level anything. is Jurassic Park, but so, uh, uh, it introduced uh, an entire uh, generation. Uh, well, the crazy thing is there was, there was another movie that came out this month that just going to take a gander at that, I think could, it's time. that was going to give it some stiff competition, supposedly. Now, don't fault me on this. I tried to do the clone stamp tool again, and it's a little difficult. So I okay. kind of fell back on some old habits. But oh, look at that Jurassic that Park. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. I, I fell back on some old habits. I couldn't just yeah. erase what, what I wanted. Fuck? To. <laughs> it just looks like, a, it looks like hey, a movie theater on fire. 
It looks like the end of Inglorious Bastards right now. <laughs> yeah. I think Jimmy knows this one. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, no, I totally know this. Now, I so. wasn't going to be surprised if Jeff just knew what this was. I might. Um, do, you, do you know what it is? Because I won't I, uh, mind. Honestly. And we'll still, I'll still give you a chance to play some other aspects and give you points. If you know what this is right now. All right. I'll, I'll give you I mean, I, I have a feeling, but I, I don't know specifically. All right. So let yeah, me. What do you think it is? All right. Well, can I, let me describe the poster. Sure. First. I so, forgot people listen. Oh, uh, yeah, there's audio. We're in a movie theater. Uh, there's the crowd is all is all suddenly shocked and, and appalled because there's something seemingly coming out of the screen. The screen is uh covered in various um you know movie tropes. There's a battle axe, there's a dude with a gun, there's, there's a, even a, a dinosaur coming the at dinosaur you. Dinosaur back there. A and who can forget a helicopter? Just there's a helicopter there. up in the up on the top, like on the outside of the screen. Um, it's a pretty I think it's a chopper, I'm pretty sure. Honestly. Is this last action hero? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Was so, it chopper that gave it away, or just everything you listed? No, it's just everything at once. Like if you had blurred yeah. the whole screen. That's why I'm would... like, what am I gonna do? Make this just a blurry image? Like it's crazy that. The thing we usually do is we have you guess what this is, but also try to come up with a better film, you know? Like, you how would you crazy do that? You can't. Work? It's a perfect movie. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you know what's crazy about this? Is that this movie did not do well. But if you ask anybody of our generation, I thought it did well. Mm -hmm. Because I always loved it. Yeah, because it well, see, we were the prime demographic it when it came out. So no, you see what it was is like our uh, our parents probably looked at it and was like, oh no, that's garbage. There's better movies to take our kids to go see. But we probably wanted to see it. But we ended up seeing those other movies, and then when we finally saw it, like uh, on VHS, because time. I didn't I didn't see this in theaters. I didn't <laughs> I did didn't I. I didn't see this until yeah. high school, myself. So I I sort of missed I, it. I didn't know I, what I, was this, this opened up the week. <laughs> Before or after Jurassic Park? I think I think June 18th. I think so. It's a week later. Okay, so yeah, I had no chance. I had no chance. Um, John McTiernan directed it. Shane Black wrote the script. So, across the board, it's all, all the credentials for everybody is, is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Plus, Arnold's coming off of his biggest box office hit which is terminator 2 right so there's, there's no reason to think that this isn't going to do well it, it beat until jurassic park first came week. along and just wrecked everything it did get 15 million his first week but jurassic park is in its second week and gets 38 that this is this is back when movies could like maintain staying power at the box office which doesn't happen anymore mm -hmm. also things are word of mouth hits where they go up and the so, next week is sleepless in seattle and dennis the menace Right. And so they take the portion that could have been last action here a second week. It falls down to eight, whereas Jurassic Park stays in first at 27. So at this point, Jurassic Park has already made 171, and last action here has finally made three fifths of what Jurassic Park made in its first weekend. Do you think people were just not hip to the idea of Arnold parodying himself? My guess is that adults thought it was more for kids, so they just didn't go, and the kids were going to see Jurassic Park or Dennis the Menace. I think that's all. Honestly. I think it's I the think character it's one of the best comedic performances. Yeah. I think it's just timing. Maybe if this had come out two weeks earlier, it would get a jump on Jurassic Park. Right. And it makes its money back that way. And now you have two choices. So word of mouth would have helped it. But I think it's fine. I think we technically could have said this was a hidden gem because it's underrated. Well, I think a lot of people like it, though, which is weird. Um, that's what I mean. Like, it's adults. Anyone that's... Our parents' age wouldn't have cared. Right. Even if they liked him. I think, although, like what Jeff was saying, he thinks like Spielberg movies are too long. I think this movie's a little too long, too. It does have pacing issues, especially when he comes into the real world. And also, another thing I wish is that um, I wish they contrasted the movie world with the real world a little bit. Because there's stuff that happens in the real world that's pretty implausible. I'm like, mm -hmm. this would only happen in a movie. Yeah. Um... And also, when they start, when the villain's looking at the paper, looking at showtimes for movies, and you see, like, Dracula and some other things, and you're like, oh, my God, are we going to go into those films? It yeah. It seems almost like a missed opportunity that they didn't go a little bit crazier with it. 
funny thing was when I was in high school, I, I had an idea for that sort of thing to happen. And then my friends were like, have you not seen Last Action Hero? Yeah. And then I watch it and I'm like, that doesn't do what I wanted it to. I wanted to go into a couple of films, kind of like Stay Tuned, but in films. Oh. You, go in, you go into one movie theater and someone keeps jumping from screen to screen in a multiplex. I don't right. think that's ever happened, right? Uh, shocker. It happened. They were doing it on TV shows, but yeah, nobody, so the, nobody so remembers again, that. So again, I mean, twice they, on TV and never in a theater. Right. Mary Melodies did something like that, sort of, except it was jump a bookworm going through books, and I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure it well, went it was... through actual stories, but that's a that's an old trope. That was mm-hmm. Gumby's whole thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gumby, oh, yeah, Gumby too. Has... Um Dan DeVito's in this too, you know. Is he? Plays the animated oh, yeah. cat. I didn't remember that. He's the animated cat. My favorite um, thing in the film is when they go to the video store and Sylvester Stallone is the Terminator. Yeah. That's a good bit. It's funny because uh, even in Twins, they make fun of uh, Stallone. Yeah. He's walking down the street, he sees the poster for Rambo, and then he compares his bicep and he laughs at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, this, this is why I like Arnold. So, yeah, the sad part is, like, as much as I like Stallone, he was never good at picking comedies. Honestly, Schwarzenegger's had a pretty good track record with picking comedies for mm-hmm. the most part, like Twins, This, Kindergarten Cop. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, actually, interestingly enough, weird side note, and this is the 20th, 5th anniversary it would have been if this had gotten produced. And which one? Re- based on this bombing, Arnold was going to do the Hans and Franz movie. Oh. The skit from SNL. Really? They had written the script. He was down for it. It was him parodying himself again because he was going to play their cousin. Okay. But Would he have been guy, a big character or like a cameo? He was going to be a third lead. Hmm. They, re- they were hinging the whole movie on him. Hmm. But then uh, this came out, tanked. And they scrapped the whole pot project, which is kind of a shame because I kind of would like to have seen that. Um, as a matter of fact, if you're more interested in that, Conan O'Brien just hosted uh, a podcast about it called the Lost Hans and Franz movie because he co-wrote the script with Robert Smigel. Mm-hmm. And they just did a script reading of it in four parts. You can find it on like, YouTube. And- oh, yeah. It says just happened in May. Yeah, they just did it. That's funny. Good time, probably because it's about 30 years since. So they were probably trying, yes. it says in the early 90s they were developing it. So they probably yeah. tried to do it in 93. They were, yeah. And it says they ultimately declined to participate following Last Action Hero. So they were probably trying to do it as a follow up. It could have been his 94 or 95. Yeah, they were getting what, what does he do well, next? He actually comes back with True Lies. Okay, I thought True Lies was next. Next year, right? It's next year in 94. So, so it works, I think. But imagine if they tried to do Hans and Franz right away. Maybe True Lies doesn't happen. I know. So in a so in a way, this not doing that well was kind of a godsend. Yeah, because then after that, he does <laughs> End of Days. Uh, oh no, no uh, that's later down the line. Eraser and the one where he's pregnant. The two I haven't seen. Oh, yeah. So he does try to do comedy again too. Yeah, Racer was the last big one. So I'm looking yeah. at my Arnold section of my DVDs. Oh, that's funny. I got them you in chronological have, order. You just have it there. I, I went to Wikipedia. <laughs> um, yeah, I like Last Action Hero. What about uh, Charles Dance doing a villain thing He's a great... in the early 90s? Yeah. Well, it's funny because I just, because I, I watched R Ray movies all the time as a kid. I had just seen him in uh, Alien 3, mm-hmm. where he wasn't the villain. He was a love interest. Yeah. So this is a weird. Because I guess after this, he kind of got typecast as villains. Which is weird, since this film didn't do well. Yeah. Because after this, I don't think he plays much uh, much else variety. And honestly, this probably could have like launched him into the, the next transfer. Yeah, he could have been the next Jeremy Irons. Bridget Wilson's in it. And I, she, kind of, she kind of had a pretty steady career in the late 90s, if I recall. Yeah. But now she's She's married to Pete Sampras. Mm-hmm. Good for him. No, yeah, so, uh, not good for him. No. Uh, what about that kid? 
I like the kid. I like Austin O'Brien a lot in the movie. I yeah. think that the, one of the major criticisms was people thought he was annoying. Yeah. I think he should come off as zealous and eager. He's in a movie with his favorite action star. One mm-hmm. one byproduct of this not doing well is I wish they had done a standalone Jack Slater movie. They, yeah, we, we couldn't have done this on the underrated like hidden Jack. Not really. But like I, Like, again... I think uh, in hindsight, this movie's actually gotten better with age, and people have embraced it now. So mm-hmm. the fact they didn't do that well is yeah. nostalgia helps. So I put in the notes because I didn't know who we should pick. But yeah, I, I didn't look at the notes. Fuck. I said, oh, "Wow," I said, uh, "Dealer's choice," because I don't know what we should do. Uh, what do you guys think? I mean, we could easily just pick one of the actors and be like, "Which one's our favorite of theirs?" I mean, there's a bunch of poker movies we could do. Oh, yeah. Could we could pivot, oh, yeah. Easy. We could pivot to another thing, like, what's our favorite movie from one of the Jurassic Park actors, just because that's the bigger movie of the, the month, that sort of thing. I don't know. I'm up for anything. Oh, what if? Hang on. I'm looking at Spader's filmography. Now. No, since, since he was the real villain, favorite M. Emmett Walsh. <laughs> oh, that's good. He no, does have a lot of films. I'm kidding. I don't know. Actually, that might be too hard. He's in a lot. Yeah. You want me to go? Oh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Mikey and Nikki. The Elaine May. Yeah, the, you saw it, right? No. Oh, I think so. Um, It's Peter Falk, John Cassavetes. I actually don't even remember him and Walsh being in it. But Good choice, I guess. I'm looking at his film. Okay, wait. I'll pick something where it's recognizable that he's in. Uh, Raising Arizona. That's a good choice. I was going to say that either way. Well, that's a good choice. Yeah, I'm just yeah, buttering you up. So, so I'll say Blood Simple, then. Great choice. Honestly, that... <laughs> oh, what? he was in the Flash TV series from 1990? Yes, mm-hmm. he was. Oh. He's been around forever. Dude, he's in 164 movies. Yeah. I'm going to go with Slapshot. I knew you were going to pick that. He has one of my favorite moments. I'm yeah. glad you didn't say my pick before I did, which Man. you often do. If um, I had seen Critters, you know what's funny? I have eight other movies before that. He has the fun. funniest. He has the funniest thing in the film where they're just talking about one of the players on the team. They went into the penalty box, and, <clears throat> and he's like, he went in there, and he's just like, he's jerking off. He's, he went in the penalty box. Re- Re- Reggie, Reggie, he's not, he's not allowed to do that in the box. And, and Palmer was just like. We we have five dollar tickets to these games. Do you care what he does in the penalty box? Might be my favorite hockey movie. Yeah, he's not getting it at home. Just let him do it. It's great. Everyone should be watching the ice. Okay, so I go raising Arizona. Then. Yeah. Wait. So what What are you thinking, Jeff? Why do I think I felt like I used that for a different? Because you love raising Arizona. You probably did it for John Goodman. Never mind, can I change my vote? Yeah, stick with the one you didn't actually see him in. Nah, I'll go with Blood Simple then, because he's got the best role in that one. I'll go with Blood Simple. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking, I'm trying to narrow it down. That's it. I haven't seen anybody play as sleazy. He's uh, uncredited in Midnight Cowboy. Mm-hmm. He's a very small part. He's got a hilarious cameo in the which, jerk. which is funny because there's yeah, a original character say, in the movie the, we watched just recently. The jerk was actually the jerk was what I was leaning toward. Oh Go yeah, jerk. yeah. He's hilarious great, in it. Great choice. Tries to kill him. He must hate these cans. <laughs> yeah, not gonna lie. Go, go with the jerk. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna. Giant you know yeah, you to. yeah. No, it's my <laughs> only option. It really is because that's because when when you said the the dude with the voice, I recognized the voice yeah. from like from my memory. Like I know much, what character he is. Much like the music of Chance, we all knew where this was headed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like all, all his I going through the list, all his other stuff. Like there's like there's nothing that I remember him from. Mm-hmm. Like he he blends. Yeah, he in stands out in, in those four films. That's probably yeah. the four that he stands out in the most. I'm gonna be honest. So I think I think we picked it because with the that. Iron Giants, him and uh uh the guy that does the voice for the general, who's like uh mm-hmm. um, it's uh, uh Fraser's dead. 
Yeah, Frazier's dad. That was yeah. yeah that was yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, don't know them much from anything else, but I, re- I hear their voices. Like, I know what like what characters they were. Mm-hmm. Both great in uh, Coen Brothers films. Oh, yeah. oh Barton Fink, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna have some returning characters in our next film. Uh, we we did films with both of these people in uh, 1990, actually, and uh, it's a film I've never seen, but was one in the filmography of its star that I'd always wanted to get around to. It's called Rising Sun. It stars Sean Connery, who we covered in Hunt for Red October, and Wesley Snipes, who we covered in uh, King of New York. So, who wrote it? I don't know, actually. Michael Crichton. Oh, wrote the novel. oh. perfect. That's why we picked it originally, because we were going to follow up uh, a month we didn't cover Michael Crichton by covering Michael Crichton. There you go. So, that's cool. I forgot about that. That's very Keep exciting. I'm looking forward to it, because I'm, I'm enjoying collecting some uh, 90s films from actors I like a lot yeah. that I just never got around to. So, And it's one that we clearly don't talk about. Everyone's all about The Rock a few years from now. That's like his big 90s thing. He does The Untouchables and then The Rock and nothing in between. Yeah. So. Anyway, hope you enjoyed our discussion on the highlight of June 11th, 1993. Yeah. Uh, we'll yeah. be back. We'll be back next month. Like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, but no. Why don't you say it? I don't need to anymore. Everyone, everyone comments on their own. They know how to do it. Sure, sure, sure. It's just reactionary at this point.